Last season's title races you should watch video was a lot of fun, so let's do it once more. I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV. Subscribe if you dig the content at any point during this video, and no further announcements. Let's go. We'll start with an obvious one. If there's any of you who don't watch the Premier League at all, you're missing out on one of the best title races since the probably the 2011-12 season in which Manchester City beat United on goal difference. And we all heard that iconic Aguero! This season, it's a two-horse race, as is often the Premier League standard in recent history, with defending champions Manchester City losing only four times to Chelsea, Crystal Palace, Leicester, and Newcastle, and drawing only twice from 36 matches. They're currently on a 12-match unbeaten stretch in the Premier League, which is also a 12-match winning streak, and haven't conceded in three matches either. That's the kind of form they're in to close out this season. Their challengers, Liverpool, aren't much worse, as they're unbeaten in 15 matches, having won 7 straight, and have lost just once all season, while having the league's best defense. From 36 matches, they've accumulated 91 points, enough to claim 8 of the last 10 Premier League titles. And yet, that's only enough for 2nd place in the Premier League this season, as City lead with 2 matches remaining. City do play one of the teams that beat them, still, and happens to be in great form, Leicester City, and then a Brighton team that could potentially be fighting for its life, depending on how their match against Arsenal goes this weekend. So, not too many foregone conclusions there, though you'd expect City to win. Liverpool, they have Newcastle, up against their former manager Benitez, as well as the giant killer's Wolves on the final match day. All the while, they have two legs against Barcelona sandwiched in between, so that's going to take something out of them as well. City, they just have the FA Cup final to worry about, but that's not until after the season is wrapped up, so it's advantage City, but anything can happen. You'll find I'll be saying that a lot in this video. <laughs> There's a decent race in the second tier of England, the championship, because although the top two teams who will get automatic promotion has been settled, with Norwich currently occupying first and Sheffield United also secure in second, however with Sheffield just three points behind Norwich, if the Canaries lose to a resurgent Aston Villa team while Sheffield win by two goals or more, they could swap places at the last, but if Norwich gets a draw or a win, then it's within their own hands. Sheffield United, they're almost tacked on to be a winner as they are to face a hapless Stoke that occupied mid-table obscurity title quite well at 16th. So, the championship goes into this final match day, this Sunday, May 5th, with the potential of the top two switching spots. Let's move away from a top five league and go to the Polish Ekstraklasa. We'll be back for Germany later, don't worry, we're not done with the top five just yet. So in Poland last season, we also had an incredible title race with Lech Poznan on top during the regular season, but this will be in case you forgot. The Polish Ekstraklasa is one of those leagues that splits into a relegation half and a championship half following the 30th match day. Eight teams in each division. Everybody plays each other in their own division once more. So the top eight teams play each other once more and the bottom eight play each other once more. If you win during the regular season, that's good, well, for pretty much nothing. So despite Lech Poznan being top after the regular season, they dropped to third and Legia Warsaw just edged Jagiellonia Bialystok for the title last season. So this season, <laughs> sorry to get sidetracked, Legia Gdansk led on goal difference after the initial 30 matches, but after splitting into the championship and relegation rounds, they've swapped spots with Legia Warsaw, and with four matches remaining, they're three points behind the leaders. But just one point back of them on 62 is Piast Glevise. Apologies for the pronunciation. The team that finished just one place above relegation last season. Legia Gdansk just lost to Warsaw and have the cup to worry about as well, while Warsaw just have their final four matches, one of which is up against third place Piast Glevise. The extra class of man. They always deliver as far as title races go, and it all wraps up on May 19th. Primera Liga, I prefer calling it that over the sponsor name. <laughs> and yet again, it has a solid title race, with Benfica just two points ahead of Porto. Last season saw Porto just edge in front of a lost and confused Benfica under Rui Vitoria, and then widen the gap in the last few matches as Benfica's form faltered. In fact, that faltering form for Benfica continued on into the following season, this season, while Porto continued to look solid under Sergio Conceição. In fact, Braga looked better than Benfica also in the first half of the season, while Sporting and Benfica sort of fought for the top four. 
But with the eventual sacking of Rui Vitoria and introduction of Bruno Lage, everything changed. In fact, this graphic illustrates it well. For Benfica's numbers, the ones in brackets are the total number or average from the entire season, while the bigger, bolder numbers are those from when Bruno Lage took over in January. Improvements in both goals scored and goals conceded outrageous numbers in the time he's been there. Since he took over, Benfica hasn't lost a single match in the Liga, with the one blip on the radar being a draw. Of 16 matches, he's won 15, enough for them to close the gap and move from 4th all the way up to 1st. For Porto, from their opening 16 matches, they only dropped points on two occasions. A 3-2 loss to Vitoria Guimarães and a 1-0 loss to Benfica somehow. I mean, I guess the players were just playing for their own pride there. I won't give any credit to Vitoria. <laughs> but in the second half of the season, while they have only lost once so far, they have picked up a habit of dropping points through draws. And just ask Liverpool how draws can seem more like two points lost than one gained. Not really sure what's going wrong with Porto, their defense isn't as assured as it used to be. In the first half of the season, they were air tight. You could attribute the shift in their defensive solidity being due to the arrival of Pep in January, which forced Eder Militão to right back from center back. They still are solid defensively, they conceded 10 goals in the first half of the season, and have conceded 9 already in the second half of the season with 3 matches to go, so marginally worse, but enough for them to drop enough points to fall into second. On top of that, injuries in the attack hasn't helped them much with Abu Bakar making just six appearances this season in the league. In that time, scoring four goals, so he's a big miss. Haven't seen him since the end of September though, so it should be a good race. Mathematically, Sporting are still in it as well as they're eight points behind Benfica with three matches to go. Of course, they would need a ton of results to go their way, including Benfica losing every single match to see out the season. But again, mathematically, they are still in it as Marcel Kaiser and Bruno Fernandes have dragged the team into the mix. Sorry. Spoke about the Portuguese league for a long time there. In Turkey, we also have a nice race going on once again. They had a decent one last season. They always seem to deliver. So, there are four matches remaining in the league, and there are three teams all within a shout of winning it, and all within three points of each other. I mean, you could argue that Trabzonspor is still mathematically in the race, but they have a sporting situation. They would need every team ahead of them to lose every match, pretty much. So credit to them, but we're going to focus on the other guys. In first right now, we have Istanbul Bashek Shahir, led by manager Abdullah Avsi, who has previously led them to a few runners-up finishes in both the Turkish Cup and the league. Despite losing their second match of the season, they actually had a great start that saw them win 10 of their first 15 matches, drawing thrice and losing twice. In fact, they carried that incredible form on until mid-April, where they have begun to falter and give their opponents plenty of opportunity to catch up to them, winning just once in their last five matches. That ain't title-winning form, guys. One of said opponents is of course last season's champions Galatasaray, who will face Bishak Shahir on the penultimate match day of the season. That's high stress. And also, fun fact, Istanbul Bishak Shahir's stadium is named after Fatih Terem, Fatih Terem Stadium, who is currently the manager of Galatasaray. Gala's form has been incredible in the second half of the season so far. After winning just 7 of their opening 16 fixtures, they have now gone unbeaten in their last 14 matches, which has seen them go from as low as 7th all the way up to within just one point now of Bashak Shahir. As mentioned earlier, these two will face off on the second to last match day of the season, but Galatasaray also has to play the team that you can't sleep on in third, Besiktas. If there was any team with the wind well and truly in their sails right now, it would be Besiktas, as they are now unbeaten in 13 matches and have won six in a row, scoring 19 in that time frame and conceding seven. However, they arguably have the toughest final four fixtures as they play Galatasaray next, Alanya Spor, Trabzon Spor, who remember is in fourth right behind them, and Kasim Pasa on the final match day. So again, Besiktas Shahir has a one point lead on Galatasaray and Besiktas are just three points off the top as well. Going to be another great end to the Super League. All right, let's look at one that you're probably very much familiar with, the Bundesliga. But there's actually a better race going on in Germany at the moment as suggested by my man Bear Grylls. So we'll mention that briefly as well after the Bundesliga, which makes sense. So after Borussia Dortmund looked so good, in the first half of the season, the second half has had its moments of worry for them. They didn't pick up a single domestic loss until December of 2018 against Fortuna Dusseldorf, perhaps sowing the seeds for a troubled second half of the season. February is where it all went very 
very wrong for them, as at one point across all competitions, they had just one win from eight matches. They had almost completely gotten past that patch of form, as they have won five of their last seven matches, but the two matches they failed to win were embarrassing for them, to say the least. The first, a 5-0 drubbing at the hands of Bayern Munich, as they have wrestled top spot from Dortmund once again, while the other was a 4-2 Revier Derby loss to Schalke, a team that has flirted with the relegation playoff spot all season and are still just six points from safety. Bayern, on the other hand, started poorly under Niko Kovac, found some great form starting in December, and haven't looked back ever since, with their one blip being a 3-1 loss to Bayer Leverkusen in early February. Since their loss to Dortmund in November of 2018, Bayern have won 16 of their 20 matches, with just one loss to speak of. That being the Leverkusen loss, of course. However, you get the feeling that this is Bayern Munich light or discount edition these days, as the squad's age has reared its head on a few occasions, and injuries to important players certainly haven't helped much as well. Their defense has been the main culprit at times, with Boateng and Hummels being inconsistent when they're playing, and even the formerly unbeatable Manuel Neuer shipping some goals that he just wouldn't dare to concede in his past. Some of them could be down to the slow defense though. So the race in the Bundesliga gives you this strange feeling like, despite Bayern having a two-point lead over Borussia Dortmund, it wouldn't surprise you to see them blow it, especially since they have the tougher final three fixtures as they play Hanover 96 at home, which should be a victory, but then are away to a very strong RB Leipzig that's unbeaten in a million matches now, and play at home to a strong Eintracht Frankfurt, though they are seemingly low on gas these days. Dortmund? They play a tough Werder Bremen, then Fortuna Dusseldorf at home, who remember they lost to in the last fixture in December, and then Borussia Mönchengladbach away, whom are in bad form at the moment. Oh yeah, and Dortmund will have to do this without Marco Reus, who is suspended for two of their final three matches. And just quickly, in the second Bundesliga, there always seems to be an absolute insane race for the promotion spots. There are just three matches remaining here, and six points separate first from fourth. The top two teams get automatic promotion into the Bundesliga, while the third place team gets the relegation playoff spot against the 16th place team from the Bundesliga. So as of now, it's looking like it would be VfB Stuttgart from the Bundesliga versus Union Berlin from the second Bundesliga, if things stay how they are. On May 12th, fourth placed Hamburger SV takes on second placed Paderborn, which could cause a little swap in the standings depending on how this weekend's matches go. So there's a lot to watch there. Things could change drastically in the final few match days. Another quick shout out to the Belgian League, a league that you guys had suggested when I asked my community what title races you will be keeping an eye on. Of course, they are now in their playoff championship phase of their season as Genk came out on top during the regular season. Similar sort of format to that of the extra class from before. So now with the top six teams moving on to the championship playoff, Genk is still currently in the lead and looking to be the favorites to take it all. Though there are still four matches remaining and their lead over Club Brugge is just six points. They play each other on the 12th of May, so there could be major title implications there. The Eredivisie, where for the one millionth time over the last decade or so, the title will be decided on the final day of the season. The two contenders, AFC Ajax and PSV Eindhoven. PSV took the lead in the title race early, winning 16 of their 17 matches in the first half of the season. Pretty incredible form, 48 of a possible 51 points. Part of the reason for their success is Luke de Jong having one of the most prolific seasons of his career. With one match remaining, he already has the golden boot wrapped up pretty much with 28 goals this season. That is, of course, unless Tadic scores five goals on the final match day and de Jong goose eggs it, you know? Mark van Bommel's side has lost only twice so far this season, once to Feyenoord, who loves grabbing a result against Ajax and PSV, more on what they did to Ajax later, and once, of course, most recently, to Ajax, an Ajax side that was down to 10 men for much of the second half, and yet they still managed to find two more goals to win at 3-1. And I think that speaks well to the kind of fight that Ajax has shown down the stretch. They didn't have an incredible start this season under Eric Ten Hag, but once they found their form, they haven't looked back. Well, that's not necessarily true, as in January of 2019 and early February, they had a couple of results go against them. The first of which being a shocking 6-2 loss to the aforementioned Feyenoord. Certainly a day to forget, and sort of speaks to this strange form that Ajax have, wherein they either win or they lose. They have drawn just twice this season in the Eredivisie, 
Similar thing that their Champions League opponents Tottenham are afflicted with. The inability to draw, it seems. Both a blessing and a curse though, because again, ask Liverpool where having just a single loss has got them. Though again, I mean, Liverpool are unfortunate that they are so good in a season where City are so good as well. But anyway, Ajax's form since March has only gotten better and better as they have started destroying teams in the Eredivisie. And so, with just two matches remaining, Ajax lead PSV on goal difference with both teams on 80 points. By the way, Ajax have scored an incredible 111 goals in 32 matches. PSV, not bad either. 16 less than them with 95. Anyway, Ajax play Utrecht, Ten Hag's former team, and then close the season out against relegation playoff candidates De Graafschap. PSV, they play fourth placed AZ Alkmaar on the penultimate day and finish up at home to Heracles in sixth. PSV have the tougher fixtures to close things out, but it still should be a very tasty finish. All right, guys, don't forget to let me know what other title races you'll be following. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And if you appreciated the video, then a like is always welcome and a subscription. If you're new around here, oof, now I'm just falling in love with you. Thanks again, I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and I'll catch you in the next one.